Nowadays, there aren't a whole lot of color infrared foam out there. Aerochrome being the most well-known has unfortunately been long discontinued and it is increasingly difficult to find and subsequently become ridiculously expensive. But black and white infrared film is readily available. And while technically not a true infrared film, these films talk to panchromatic but have an extended sensitivity that ranges past the visible spectrum and into the near infrared. In order to capture part of the infrared spectrum, it requires a special filter like an R72 that blocks out all the visible light and only allows an infrared light to pass. But for the sake of brevity, I'm just gonna call it black and white infrared film. This all had me thinking, what happens if you trichrome black and white infrared film? And in my last video, I talked about the basics of trichrome photography. And while I recommend you watch that video to understand how it all works, I can't tell you what to do, I'm not your dad. So here's a quick recap. Use black and white film. Take three pictures, one with a red filter, one with a green filter, one with a blue filter, mash them together, and with some hocus pocus magic, if done correctly, you will get a color image. Now, for my first attempt, I didn't meter the scene properly, and instead I just took a general meter reading and attempted to apply filter factors in my head. And let's just say there's a reason why I got a C in math. And the results look like this. And here's this to give you an idea of what the scene normally looks like. When you compare these together, there's an obvious color shift, to say the least. All of the greens turned into this aggressive pinkish red, which is kind of expected since vegetation reflects infrared light, but disappointingly the water and the rocks turn purpley pink. The branches turn red or purple, and in general it just, it just doesn't look right. But at this point, I proved myself though that there is something here. The results weren't quite there yet, but the potential was. So for my second go around, I instead took my Nikon FE2 because it has a built-in light meter and average priority mode and surprisingly meters through the R72 filter just fine. And I got much better results. The trees shifted towards softer red. The branches retained some of the yellows and the browns and the water actually looked natural-ish. And while the camera was able to get a meter reading through the filters, it still had problems metering complex lighting like a bright sky and a dark foreground. Especially since I shot most of these with a wide angle lens with the sky taking up the top half of the scene. The internal meter got tricked several times and it missed proper exposure leading to some of the more common issues with exposing for trichrome photography. But this time around, it was undeniable. The process worked. And so I went out and I shot more and more and more and more and more and more. Let me just say right now, this is one of my favorite things to do. There's a level of mystery when shooting film, not knowing what you're gonna get until the film is developed, but then there's an added layer when you shoot infrared because you don't know exactly what color you captured. All of the vegetation in these shots are normally green, and depending on the scene, they could shift to a red or orange or yellow. And with every roll I've shot, I've been learning more and more about this process. One of the things I've changed is that I'm now shooting with a handheld spot meter. I'm able to get a meter reading by placing the filter directly in front of the spot meter and taking a reading. This allows me to dial in the exposure to a specific point and it's given me much more consistent results. This still suffers from all the deficiencies of track mode photography. It's a slow process, you're locked down on a tripod, you need these filters, you burn three times the film, so on and so forth. But unlike shooting normal RGB trichrome photos, this gives you a look that is otherwise really difficult or expensive to recreate. And to me, this is the utility of trichrome photography. While I still hold out hope that Aerochrome will one day make its triumphant return, this is what I got and I'm more than happy to make it work.